it's Ronaldo. It is Real. Twenty minutes later. It's Ronaldo. It is Real Madrid who win the UEFA Champions League. Hey guys, I'm Ich, and today is a very special day. It is June 23rd, 2021, which means that I've been living in Australia for exactly 10 years to the day. Before I moved here, I had never been to a soccer game before and knew practically nothing about rugby, Aussie rules or cricket and never even heard of netball. And 10 years later, I still don't understand cricket. I have a basic understanding of the others, but soccer is definitely the sport that I've been covering the most and I've learned to understand and also appreciate a whole lot more. I've filmed hundreds of games, trainings, press conferences, even a few grand finals, and I've produced a lot of hype videos. And like with any other creative process, when you're doing the same thing over and over, it's easy to get complacent and stay within your comfort zone, which is, in my opinion, the worst thing you could do. At the end of the day, every single one of my clients is working with me now because they were disappointed by the person who was producing their videos before me. So for me, it's very important to keep reinventing myself all the time so that my clients don't feel the need to hire someone else to produce better content in the future. Which is why since today I'm working on another soccer hype video, I decided to push myself and try something I've never done before. Basically, in my video, I want at some points for someone to score a goal and as the ball hits the back of the net, I have the entire thing burst into flames. I've never done anything like it because when it comes to After Effects, I'm average at best. But I figured that if I was able to teach myself how to juggle when I was 12, surely I should be able to learn this too. I just finished watching a Peter Sorellis tutorial where he does pretty much the same thing, but in a basketball context. So instead of a soccer goal bursting into flames, he has a basketball turning into a blue magical sphere. And just by watching his video, I think I've got a pretty good idea of how I'm going to do this. But if your intention is to apply what you're learning here today in a basketball video, and more specifically to the basketball itself, then you got my blessing to leave this video and go watch Peter's, which I'll link in the description. My main takeaway from his video was that there's no need for someone with a little bit of After Effects experience to be overwhelmed by the finished product, because there's no ridiculous amount of steps to memorize. Instead, it's a lot like math. As long as you understand the formula, you'll be fine. And in this case, the formula that I'm gonna teach you today in order to do this is masking. Once we apply masking properly, all there's left to do really is just to add a free plugin called Saber. Step two is pretty easy. Just click on the link in the description that says free Saber plugin or just Google Saber plugin. Uh, that will take you to the Video Copilot website where you can download the Saber plugin for free and then install it on your computer. Unfortunately, I'm not allowed to show publicly the actual video that I'm making, so for the purpose of this tutorial, I found this clip from the 2016 UEFA Champions League final that will do just fine. I basically want the entire goal to catch fire as the ball hits the back of the net. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a mask around the goal. My starting point will be maybe a second before the impact so that we can just fade in the fire effect later. And now I'll just use the pen tool to go around the outside of the goal. I'll change the mode to none so that I can see what I'm doing and make a few adjustments. Now, if I go all the way to the end of this clip, you can see that there's some camera movement going on here. So I'm going to go back to my original point, make sure my mask is selected and press play on the tracker right here, which will keep my mask in front of the goal while the camera moves.
But one thing that the tracker won't do is adjust the mask to those little wavy movements that you see the net doing once the ball hits it. So once the tracker is done doing its thing, I'm just gonna go through almost frame by frame and adjust the edges around the net. Okay, so now that the mask is done, let's get some fire going. We need a black solid at this point, so I'm just gonna right click on my timeline, select new, and then solid. If the color is not black by default, make sure you change it to black, and then click OK. Now we want to copy and paste our mask to the new solid, so let's go back to our starting point, select the mask, press Command or Control C, then select the black solid, and then press Command or Control V. And if everything looks good, you can now delete the mask from the video layer if you want to. Now let's go into our effect panel and search for Saber, and then apply the Saber effect to our black solid. Then let's go in the effect controls and change the core type to layer masks. And now that the Saber effect is applied to our mask, we can simply go into the preset menu and select Fire. To see the final result, we simply need to change the opacity mode of our black solid to color dodge. And voila! All we need to do to finalize this part of the process is to add a couple of opacity keyframes at the start, change the opacity to zero on the first one, and we are done with our gold frame. The next thing we need to do is light the ball on fire as well, which I'm fast forwarding through right now because it's the exact same steps as we did for the gold. You'll notice that I'm purposely designing a bit of a trail behind the ball with my mask to make it look cooler and make the kick seem more powerful. You should also notice that we can't use the same black solid for both the goal and the ball, so we need to copy the ball mask onto a new black solid and apply the saber effect on that solid as well. Now that this is done, the next thing I want to do is get rid of the fire in front of the goalkeeper, because we obviously can't have that. So what I'll do is duplicate the video layer, put the duplicate on top of the first black solid so that it is in front of the fire, then I'm going to find the first frame where the goalkeeper stands in front of the fire. To do that I have to turn the duplicate off for a second, and now that I've found the first frame I can start my duplicate layer from there, turn it back on and start masking the goalkeeper. Of course make sure you are selecting the right layer adjust the feathering and expansion of the mask as need be, and since the goalkeeper goes from a kneeling position to standing up, there's no point in using the tracker, I don't think the result would be that great, so let's just adjust the mask manually. Okay, this looks pretty good, but there's one more thing I need to do to give that fire a lot more power. Um, I'm gonna add a fire explosion overlay, which I'll also put a link to in the description below so that you guys can download it for free and use it to create the exact same effect in your videos. Okay, so I just imported the fire explosion overlay into my project, and as I'm dragging it into my timeline, I just want to make sure that I put it below the goalkeeper mask that we just created, otherwise the explosion will be in front of him, and that's not what we want, of course. Now the two things we need to adjust with this layer are the timing of the explosion and its position. Let's start with the easiest, the timing. Obviously, I want the explosion to start when the ball hits the net, but the problem I have here is that the explosion happens a bit too slowly, way too slowly actually. So let me speed it up by 50% and see how that works. To do that, I just right click on my layer, go time, time stretch, and then type 50. Yeah, that's much better. Now let's do positioning. I'm gonna find my first keyframe and then line up the explosion with the back of the net. To do that, I need to turn my layer into a 3D layer and adjust the orientation as well. Okay, that looks good, so let's go to the end of the clip and adjust the position there. Oh, 
all good. Now I probably need to add a few keyframes in between. So let me fast forward through that. Oh, and also you see how the top of the explosion gets cut off. Uh, to fix that, I'll just play with the height of the clip, which means that I'll probably have to yeah, readjust every uh, position keyframe as well. And finally, let's change the opacity mode to add. And voila! With a little bit of sound design and color correction on top, here's the finished product. It's Ronaldo! It is Real Madrid! If you're still watching, it's probably because you produce soccer videos or maybe even football videos. And if that's the case, then you should really watch this other tutorial in which I show you how to track a player with a circle underneath his feet that follows him around like a bad smell. Just like the effect we created today, it's quite easy to do and also very helpful for recruiting videos. So on that note, thank you for watching. My name is E and I hope I earned the privilege of your time. Thank you.